What's up everybody? Welcome back to Chronicles on YouTube. As you can see, I am once again sitting in traffic in the valley on the way, well, I'm probably in Hollywood now, but on my way back to the shop from Premier Auto Body, just because I have to take my car back today to get a ceramic coated. So I had, uh, I had other options in terms of who to go to for the ceramic coating, but I figure I might as well trust it to the guys that painted the car because they know the car the best. So yeah, I went back there bright and early this morning, like around 9 a.m. And it was like an entire day process. So I left around three o'clock, four o'clock. We stopped and chatted for a while too, but it's an all day process just because car had to be washed, car had to be uh, clayed before they could apply all the ceramic coat stuff. So I'm pretty happy with the car now. It looks great. It looks kind of nutty with the ceramic coating on it because it has like a different sheen to it, I guess you can say. But after the ceramic coating, I can't, I can't have the car touch water for the next two weeks. So the car can't be wet, can't be washed or anything. And then after that, it should be good. It should be a good amount of protection for the paint. And now I feel a little bit more um, secure and calm about having a really black, glossy car. And hopefully I myself can maintain it and, and keep it that way. And the ceramic coating will definitely help. Seemed like it took a while for me to get my car back and all that stuff, but man, everything's coming together pretty quickly now. Got the car back, had a little meat that I didn't do any video for, unfortunately. But uh, ceramic coating is done on the car now, and today my seat showed up. So, my friend Cody helped me pick it up, and now I'm going to crack one of them open just because I'm excited to see what they look like. Because it's been such a long wait. I believe the wait for these was about five months, just because of all the you know, stuff that's been going on in the world and slow shipping and all that stuff, but finally here, one of the final pieces to the car so far, and I'm excited to see how they look when I do get them on, when I mount them to the bridge rails and, and get them in the car. Also got to get in there and just kind of uh, change some other things. I need to fix some wiring in my head unit, and I also need to install my new center console, which needs to come, the old one needs to come out, and and it'll just be a lot easier to take the center console out without the stock seats in the car, just because I have so much more room in there. So once I get the stock seats out, I'll be able to tear into the center console and then might as well fix the head unit wiring while I'm in there and then do some routine maintenance stuff and figure out how to get these seats in there. Yeah, look at these bad boys. So Recaro SR7s. For the driver's seat, I got the 7F, and then for the passenger side, I got the 7, which has flat bolsters. I think this is the first time I've actually ever bought brand new seats. Crack this open, see what we got in here. Got a nice piece of dense foam. Not really sure what this is for. Maybe for you to kneel on when you're installing your seats. It's a Recaro sticker. The warranty card. This is legit stuff, you know. Hardware, mount to the brackets. I gotta figure out what this is for. I believe this is for the, the seatbelt light. Or uh, to adapt to the OE plug so you don't set off a seatbelt light. Or I can just read this and find out. <laughs> so this weekend's activities are going to be putting in these New Recaro seats that I told you guys I just got. Got to get them on these rails first and then they're going to go into that thing right there. So, first things first, I got to get these rails on to the seats themselves so that I can have the seats sitting on the ground without being on their base because I don't want them to get dirty. So I'm going to knock this out real quick and then start tearing down the car, start taking it apart 
getting the old center console off because I want to get all that stuff situated too while I'm in there. So I don't know if I'm going to get it all done in a few hours tonight, but I'm definitely going to try to knock it out for the, this entire weekend. If you guys are wondering why I'm using Brid RO rails is because they've been known to work for Recaro SR series seats and honestly they're probably the most readily available in the US and especially for this car. I got these relatively quickly, they've just been sitting at the shop because I've been waiting for the seats to come in. But yeah, Brid rails on Recaro seats for you guys that don't know. Now that both seats have the rails banded to them, you can kind of see the main difference between the two seats, between the SR7 and the 7F. See the driver's side has high bolsters, and uh, the passenger side has low ones. It's like it's more of a conventional seat. Just because when I ordered these seats, I had in mind that I was going to have passengers, and some of them might not be car people, so they wouldn't really understand why the seat has such a high bolster to it. And it just easier, you know, for even for like friends and females and stuff for it's easy for them to just get it in and out of the car without having that obstructed bolster in the way. I don't know. It just made sense to me. It also adds a unique look to both seats. One of the cool features about the uh, Sport Cross, the IS300 Sport Cross, is this weird front folding seat. I don't know why this was necessary. I don't know if you need to eat like McDonald's or some shit on there, but yeah, the, the seat folds right up. So. So it's a weird feature. It's only for the passenger side because, I mean, obviously you don't need it on the driver's side. But I guess you can either like kick back and put your legs up on here or like do some missionary on here or something. I don't know, bend somebody over, who knows. But whatever the case may be, it's a feature. And I'm glad it's here because it's going to be a lot easier to take the seat out because I can just now just fold it into one giant square. So uh, it always makes me super nervous because I've actually scratched one of my cars one time taking the seat out because the edge of the, the rail caught the door. So maybe I'll do some stuff to safeguard this and like wrap the edges or something. I still have to tilt the seat upward and then unplug all the wiring underneath because these are power seats and there's an airbag and everything. So wish me luck. So it's about 10.45 Friday evening. I've taken out the OEM seats and uh, upon taking the seats out, I discovered there is some unsavory things going on <laughs> in the carpet and under the seats. Um, I don't know if it was me that spilled some coffee at one point. I don't believe I did. I might have because I drink a lot of coffee while driving. But uh, whatever it is, that goop is in there. That It's still very tacky and it's quite chunky. So I'm not really entirely sure what it is. It could be some chili, uh, some milk, hopefully not milkshake, but uh, I've taken like the, all the unnecessary stuff out of the car, scrub the carpet, use a pretty good carpet cleaner that I've been using for years. I can't say what it is because I'm a Meguiar's guy, but it, uh, it's, a, it's a green can and uh, it works really well and uh, it's, it's cleaned my couch, most of the stuff in my cars. And it definitely took whatever that brown stuff was out of the car. So scrubbed it with a brush and then kind of just let it settle for a little bit before uh, taking like a towel to it and just kind of damp with a damp hot towel, wiping that stuff out and then getting all the goop out. And then when it dried a little bit more, I took my vacuum to it and I vacuumed the rest of the stuff out. So it looks pretty clean now. I'm pretty happy with it. It looks like kind of new. So uh, I wouldn't say it's brand new, but because there's definitely been some sort of milkshake on it. But it looks good. And uh, once I was finished with that, I was finally able to get the center console out. And the center console comes out relatively easy. Honestly, there's like a, a bunch of clips, but the way Toyotas and Lexus are built, I don't know what it is, but everything just comes out really easily. I guess maybe because uh, the Alteza was like kind of an economy car over in Japan. So when they brought it over here to the US, they probably added some luxury items, but bare bones, it's still very much an economy car. So it's very simple and things come out. The center console popped right out. Um, let me grab it.
like the original plan wasn't to get a new center console, but I was at the dealership scouring for new parts that I could replace. And what's always bothered me about this car is this section right here. You can see how it's all like marred. Oh shit, let me get some light on there. See, it's all scratched up. It's like this on both sides. And it's super annoying and bothersome because I think the previous owner or whoever he paid to install the head unit, like tore apart the dash and took some liberties with it as in just like kind of guessworking. I don't know why he decided that it was necessary to scuff this but it looks like somebody's been jabbing at it with something and it looks pretty bad. So I wasn't really happy about that because I stare at it all the time when I'm looking at my head unit. So that part's always bothered me. So when I found out that a center console was available and pretty cheap, I think it was under hundred bucks, I ordered it and the new one's super nice. You just have to switch some stuff over like the cup holder, cup holder in the back, the 12 volt lighter plug that's in here that I never use. So yeah, this thing popped right out. And then I even got a new uh, panel for the shifter too. E-brake thing was surprisingly easy to get out too. And I was even able to take the boot off. So I'm actually going to go clean that boot right now and kind of recondition the leather on it. And yeah, dude, it's just like super easy to take stuff out of this car. Just taking the car apart itself is like, if I really focused and didn't take like a thousand breaks and eat dinner in between and then watch some AEW, I'd probably get this thing done in like an hour. But it's more clean up than anything. It's just... Since I'm making the car nice, I might as well clean it up. It's tedious work, but after I took off the center console, I noticed all the other, the rest of the milkshake or whatever the hell was chili or some shit that was in there. And uh, it's still in there and it's pretty goopy. So I'm going to go clean that right now. Make sure everything is nice and tidy before the new center console goes in. Because once that goes in, I don't plan to ever take it out again. And then there's also a bypass on my head unit that I needed to add that I never added before. So I might as well do that since I'm already tearing the dash apart. And then once that's all done, I can get the seats in there. Definitely won't get to it tonight because I also have a thousand more breaks to take. And uh, I'll probably get to the seats in the morning just so I can get better footage for you guys of the seats going in. Hopefully I don't scratch the car. That's like one of the main things that I'm worried about. If it was up to me, I'd bubble wrap the whole car because I'm just, I don't know. But taking the seats out was relatively easy too. So I'm happy that I didn't damage anything there. But, uh, once the seats go in, probably try to get some good footage of that just because it looks cool. I didn't do any footage of me taking out the center console because this is not a how-to. It's not like an IS how-to video because who needs to see how to take a center console out, you know? You can just YouTube that. There's plenty of dudes that do that. So yeah, that's, that's where we're at. This is my Friday night. Making some progress. And then going into the weekend, further getting to a very, very good place for this car. I'm very happy with it. So I was up till about 2.30 last night, working on, or 2.30 in the morning working on this car. And things were going smoothly, just like cleaning up stuff here and there. And then my car was outside and then it kind of started drizzling, which is a bad idea because Got my car ceramic coated and you're not supposed to let it get wet for two weeks. So I kind of like freaked out and panicked. Hop into the car and try to drive this thing with no seats in it is, uh, is a different experience. Um, so I like put like a bucket in there and then like a wash bucket. And then I sat inside the car and moved it back inside and thankfully it didn't get too wet. So today when I got back to the shop, I decided that I wasn't going to sit on a bucket and move this car again because I didn't want to fucking crash the car. So, <laughs> so I put the driver's seat in just so I can move the car out so I didn't get a chance to really document that because it was inside the shop and it was dark. But now you guys can get a good idea of how the seats match the door panels. And uh, you'll be very surprised that it actually looks kind of spot on. Good look, pretty happy with it. This one's bolted down already. I kind of wanted a vacuum again before I put the seat back in, but there's not much space inside the shop with all the stuff inside. So here's the new center console. That's all squared away. It looks very different than the dashboard, which I kind of want to replace, but I don't know if I want to spend the money to replace the dashboard. Uh, but yeah, the center console looks great in there. You've got a chance to recondition everything, make everything look new. 
even got like the boot for the e-brake looking all nice now too which is cool so but yeah this is what the seat looks like this is how i envisioned the interior to be and it's, it's working out quite well so pretty happy with it now to get the buckle onto the other passenger seat and then throw that seat in there and then we'll be wrapped up for the day Both seats are in now. Kind of looks exactly how I want it to. Flows very well with the interior. And then this material is different than the Model Lisa material, obviously, but this one is actually a shining mesh. So at certain lights, it looks darker, and then at some angles, it's darker and lighter, I mean. So yeah, now everything's in. Got these new floor mats recently. Got my new center console. There we go. Pretty happy with it. I was thinking that the bridge rails would put the seat really low because they're RO type, but they actually sit at the perfect height. It's like not too low and not too high. Driving position is okay, so it's pretty cool. Very happy with it. Seats are in the car now. Going out for a Sunday cruise to go grab some dinner. Go eat some handmade noodles. And uh, actually, we drove the car yesterday already, so spoiler alert the seats are fine. They're not going to fall off the car or anything. But went to a meet yesterday. It's kind of crazy. I've never seen a meet like that before. I guess it must be what the kids are doing these days. But it was wild. There's like police, police helicopters and shit. We had to get out of there as fast as possible. But yeah, it's a chill Sunday. We don't really film ourselves eating and shit anymore like we used to. But that's probably because we're not actually going anywhere to eat. We just buy food and eat at the shop most days now. But this is a rare exception. Yeah. <laughs> Some white fat noodles. Yeah. I got some uh, thin. Oh, thin white. Oh. Wait, thin. It looks thin just white. the same as that one. No, no, those are white fatter. Those are, uh, Mine's so thick. The white, white Look fat how noodles. This is. The girthy noodles. <laughs> this is just right. This spicy pork belly doesn't look very appetizing. Oh wait, good. what? Huh? What size is yours? It's, it's secret one. Thin, it's called thin white. Thin white? Thin white. And yours is, is that wide? Did you research before coming here? No, I always get that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one has a thumbs up. This one doesn't. I did my research. I didn't know there's secret. I love secret menus. Yeah, no, it was on the menu. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, <laughs> It's in Chinese. Yeah, because when I went to Waffle House, I researched Chinese all menu. the secret like stuff you can order at Waffle House. Like you can get like your like uh, hash browns, like um, what's the slop? It's not sloppy. It's um. Oh, I've, never been, to I've never been to Waffle House. Yes, I have. I don't. I just ordered whatever is on the menu. You know, there's all these secret ways you can get your Waffle House meal, like prepared. I just, I just see the videos where the customers cook their own food because the people are sleeping. <laughs> Dude, told you. You already ruined your shirt. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> so, the material for my rear seats came in today. The fabric that I was trying to reupholster my seats with. Um, from a quick glance, it looks like it's kind of close, but not completely sure. So gonna try to compare it right now to the Model Lisa door panel fabric and the Recaro fabric to see if we have at least a happy medium. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. But uh, let's see. Main difference is that the mesh on the door panels is a black mesh overlaid on red. Same with the Recaro's, but the material that I got, the mesh is red with a slight border of black.
color is also slightly I mean it's close but it's either this wine red they call it or like a red red and this is not a bright red and neither is this so oh man it's off but close enough because the problem with this is that Recaro won't sell you the material because they're not like Brit where they're like very open to just selling you the gradation of fabric and whatever fa fabric they use for the seats. Recaro is very, uh, what's the correct word for it, stingy about it because you know they don't want people reproducing the seats. So I had to source these, this material. The mesh is also significantly bigger, which might be a problem. Huh, I don't know what I should do now. I'll probably talk to Durr about it and see what his opinion about it is. But the idea, instead of doing the Model Lista rear seats, I can't use a Model Lista rear seats. If you guys aren't familiar with why I can't use the Model Lista seats is because Sedan and wagon seats are different in the fact that sport cross seats fold down and so I couldn't use all of the mod I couldn't use a model at least the sedan or seat because it wouldn't mount correctly and the backing would be super weird because normally it would be mounted in a sedan where there would be a trunk and I don't have a trunk I have a wagon trunk so it's open. So the only way around it would be to get either get a model lease or seat and just tear it apart and use the fabric, which I don't want to do because on the model lease the seats this section is red. Everything is red but the center. But since I have Recaro's with the mesh centers, I was thinking instead of doing something that would be close to a model lease or seat, I would just do my own take on it where I would just do the centers and the mesh material to match the Recaro's. But the color is off. I'm so picky about the color being off that huh, I don't know what to do now. The idea was to just do this section in that mesh and then depending on cost and stuff I would do this section in black suede to match the Recaros or I could just keep a black leather also which wouldn't be too big of a deal. But man Knowing that the color is slightly off, I don't know. I mean, either way, I think I should do it. But because, like, the suede on the rear seats has a slight blue tinge to it. It's kind of blue-hued, which doesn't match the rest of the interior now. So I would want to redo them. But since I have the material and it's close, I think at a glance you won't notice it too much unless you look super close at it. And honestly, nobody's going to look at the rear seat anyways. So maybe I'll just do it. Hmm. Maybe... It's close, you know? Close enough where it's not terribly obvious. It's just so hard to find this material. And it's like, I thought about getting a sedan seat and just like using whatever fabric I could to kind of like Frankenstein this rear seat. But if it doesn't work, then it's going to look super stupid. So, huh. I guess I'll take this fabric out after this and see how it looks held up against the seats. Maybe it'll work. Huh. Decisions, decisions. The problem with sourcing material like this is that there's no like consistent name for it. So it was like either like sport mesh or like some sort of like sponge mesh. I don't know what the hell it's called. Huh. Well, it's actually relatively close. It's just the material is different. Definitely different shade on the seat. Uh, it's kind of annoying.
The fact that the mesh is bigger is also kind of bothersome. But it's like, do I leave the rear seats the way they are? So just imagine it like that, like that would be the center. So if we imagine this to be the center, then at a glance it won't be too off. You'd have to like stare at it, I guess, to notice the difference. You'd probably notice an immediate color difference, but because it's a shade, this is much more of like a like a purplish red. And this is a red that appears darker because of the black mesh. So today we are tackling the LED tail lights on my wagon. You can see just how crusty the inside of the car is without the tail lights on. I got my Tijuana Tiger blanket, so I don't scratch my bumper. But they tend to scratch things whenever I work on them. And then I got my wiring guy here it's from Durwire. 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 <laughs> he only he only wires tail lights. And then he's gonna eventually do Christians someday. Yeah. Mm. I should do myself, but uh, I feel like <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it took you three years to get your car started, so maybe wiring's <laughs> yeah. not your thing. <laughs> it's like I understand it enough, I just really don't like doing it. Yeah. It's easy. I got power ground and switch. After everything after that, it's a wash. I got a fancy like mil spec crimper and shit like that. I don't have a stripper. I want the no. stripper. Yeah, I was, what was I wearing the other day? Oh, my airbag cancelers and my radio. So I was like, hey, uh, Christian, do you have wire yeah. strippers? Because I was just using stri like scissors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was using scissors and I was using like a like dykes as a crimper. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, how, I was like, how are you crimping these? <laughs> perfect but they're also really cheap because nobody wanted to bid on them so they started like at 400 and then it progressively hey progressively dropped until it was like 120 bucks or something what the hell yeah nobody wanted them man that guy got super sad then probably all, this, <laughs> all his hard work all this hard work doing all this custom crafty stuff yeah it's like uh he's like a shop though so he does like all kinds of taillights mm. you know, for different things that's cool yeah he's all like never making is wagon once again right <laughs> well it doesn't sell <laughs> Yeah, some asshole in the USA bought them. <laughs> yeah, I wish they were the dark chrome housing though, but yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Here are the final results of the LED tail light install. We got LED rings for the stop and tail light for the outers and inners, and then we have more traditional LED turn signals and reverse lights on the bottom. I like the way they turned out, they look pretty cool. They're very bright, which is good. I was worried like the stop lights and the LED rings wouldn't be bright enough during the daytime, but we tested them and they look good pretty happy with everything the chrome housings are a little different but I think it flows well because the I have chrome housing headlights too I don't have the dark chrome uh, headlights and stuff and then I don't know I think it works taillights add a different look to the car and the final piece of the puzzle now is to get the TRD cluster installed and wired up and everything that one's gonna be a little bit more difficult just because there's a lot of stuff that we need to switch around and move around and Sending units that we have to add just for the oil pressure gauge and whatnot, but excited to tackle that one when I get back from my little vacation getaway. I like these, they're bright. And everything's working. And we have resistors and the turn signals too, just so, so it'll blink normal. Huge thanks to Dur for helping me wire these up, just cause he's a wiring expert and he made it so simple because he actually went and found he cut off pigtails from an OEM harness, so we were able to just wire these taillights up to OEM connectors and they were direct plug and play, which worked out great. <laughs> Stoked. I never sound like it, but I'm excited. <laughs>